Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. His name is Sam Wiley, and he is the founder of Cardio Smile, and he makes an ex well, he actually has several products, but we're going to talk about a few of them today, and he's going to talk about certain topics about heart health and about cholesterol and some of the ways that you could help your body naturally overcome conditions that you might be suffering with. So Sam, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name's Sam, and I am the founder and entrepreneur of a firm called SkySail. And we're the distributor of Cardio Smile, uh, a plant-based omega-3 called Regenerative Omegas. And then we also do quite a bit of work um, in the supplement and food industry, working with brands and ingredient manufacturers to help expand their markets help find new customers, um, enter the U.S. market, improve profitability, just kind of general services in that in that arena. You know, I, I find that, you know, nowadays a lot of people don't know enough about um, different ways that they could help themselves naturally. Now, you have a product called Cardio Smile uh, for heart and metabolic health, and it also can help with um, high cholesterol and um, other, you know, other different types of conditions. Now, you know, I was talking to you previously in the conversation, a lot of times when I would talk to people and I would mention about plant sterols, because that's one of the things that you guys focus on, people wouldn't know what plant sterols are. And they didn't, didn't realize that it could help with heart health. And they didn't, they didn't realize that it could help with high cholesterol. Maybe you can, you know, talk a little about what plant sterols are and how it could have such a humongous positive impact on your overall health, especially when you have those conditions or conditions related to those. So, so plant sterols are, um, they're a waxy substance. They come from plants, obviously. Um, they're sometimes known as phytosterols. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in British English, people would say phytosterol. Mm -hmm. um, we see them everywhere. We see uh, fats and oils in nature from yes. plants. Uh, we're very familiar with cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Cholesterol is uh, a hormone building block uh, that we we make in our bodies. Yes. It's found in animal fats and oils, whether it's butter, eggs, beef, chicken, you know, anything that we might eat that's from an animal-based source, even fish, uh, has cholesterol because we use cholesterol uh, to make, to synthesize all sorts of different hormones, testosterone, estrogen, vitamin D, Right. is made from cholesterol in our bodies. Um, you know, the whole, you have to get plenty of sunlight to get vitamin D. Uh, you know, you need to take your shirt off and sit in the sun and get, you know, soak up those, soak up those rays to make vitamin D. Well, that's happening in your skin, uh, transforming cholesterol into vitamin D. The, the problem that we've seen with the Western diet over the last hundred years or so yeah. is too much cholesterol either in our diet mm -hmm. or because of our genetics that we, we, we make from our liver, yeah, uh, they, they build up in our arteries and we get arterial plaques. Yeah. Uh, those, those, you know, so, so a long time ago, you know, medicine just dis discovered that, Hey, uh, these arterial plaques that are building up and causing blockages and, and heart disease, um, they're very closely linked to the levels of cholesterol circulating in our blood. So, right. you know, you have the cholesterol number, there's the good cholesterol, good in air quotes, the HDL high density lipo lipoprotein mm -hmm. and the bad cholesterol, the low density lipoprotein. And, um, what's interesting about plant sterols is plant sterols are very chemically, very, very similar to cholesterol. Right. But our, our body is not super good at absorbing plant sterols. And so when, when we eat, when, when we eat food, our, our liver secretes bile, yes. our bile contains cholesterol mm -hmm. and our food often, if we're not eating a plant-based diet, 
our food often contains cholesterol. And so we have two sources of cholesterol, one from our body, one from our food, and they're, they're circulating in our, in our, in our intestine. Right. And we absorb those into our bloodstream mm -hmm. and get high cholesterol in our blood. But if plant sterols are present in the right form during that digestive process, yes, we can, we can eliminate cholesterol. It, it reduces the absorption of cholesterol because it, it, it runs interference. I mean, I'm, I'm not much one for sports analogies, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's like kind of an offensive and a defensive, you know, uh, set of teams on, you know, a football team. Right. So it's, 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 it's running interference and causing the cholesterol to not be absorbed into our bloodstream. Um, so what's interesting about plant sterols is they're not uh, a novel substance, right? They're not, they're not something that we've never eaten before, or that we science just discovered. And that when, you know, we could, you know, that's created in a lab or something, and then science just discovered it. And yeah, maybe we could take it, it has this beneficial effect. These plant sterols have been in the human diet for ever, right? As long as we've eaten plants. Yeah. Uh, anywhere we find fats and oils in nature that are from plants, you know, things like olive oil, mm -hmm. um, things like avocados, right? We find plant sterols, right? Um, it's just that in the Western diet, and and the the what what's called the standard American diet, which is, <laughs> which is the sad diet, yeah, sad mm -hmm. diet, uh huh. Um, in the Western diet, our intake of plant sterols is only about 300 to 400 milligrams per day. Wow. And, and that may be enough for some, but for many who and many of us have high cholesterol, uh, whether through it's genetic and our liver overproduces yeah. cholesterol or whether it's, um, from dietary sources, maybe a, a relatively unhealthy diet, mm -hmm. um, for, for many of us, that three or 400 milligrams, it's, it's below the level that's recommended by groups such as the National Institute of Health. Mm -hmm. um, the National Institute of Health has a therapeutic lifestyle change, the TLC guidelines that say you should get 2,000 milligrams. Wow. That's a big difference yeah. than the other. <laughs> yeah, so that's. 400 <laughs> to. <laughs> You know, that's, that's, um, five times yeah. what our typical intake or more six times what our typical intake, um, for most people. And so, you know, that's, that's a recommendation. That's not a dietary recommendation right. for everybody, right? That's a dietary recommendation specifically for people who have high cholesterol. Right. And, and you know, and it says you should get plant sterols from a variety of of sources, including food and supplements. Right. Um, but typically, you know, we, when we think about sources from food, uh, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I eat a salad and I'm getting lots of plants and I, I eat a salad. I don't know about every day, but most every weekday. Yeah. I, I prepping the salad and having it ready. And it's something great to eat for lunch. Right. Um, and there's so many great phytonutrients in uh, a, a salad that has a diverse, you know, basket of, of different fruits, yeah. fruits or something, not fruits, but diverse basket of different vegetables in the salad, but the salad doesn't have much fat. Yeah. It, it typically <laughs> when we eat a salad, the only source of fat in our salad is the salad dressing. Yes. And the salad dressing is made with vegetable oil, mm -hmm. usually soybean oil. Yeah. And that typically has no plant sterols. Mm -hmm. um, soybean oils, corn oils, peanut oils, pick an oil. Uh, <laughs> they all have plant sterols. They all, the plant makes them. It needs them to make these different phytoestrogens that, that the plant needs right. in order to be a fully functioning plant. Um, but, but the, uh, modern food industry, big agribusiness, it refines the oils. It's, 
you know, the, 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 you know, what consumers have come to expect is, you know, what used to be called the Wesson cooking oil process, right? Is yeah. this refined, bleached, deodorized, clear yellow oil, yeah. you know, and, um, that that's a soybean oil or a corn oil that's been, you know, it's light straw, yellow in color. Right. It's perfectly crystal clear. It's bright. Um, and the sterols and the vitamin E are taken out of those oils. Right. And so, um, we, it, we, we've actually been, you know, not only has, you know, modern medicine and science, um, clinical research demonstrated over the last you know, 75 years or so that plant sterols are good at improving metabolic health and lowering cholesterol. We've also been systematically removing them from our diet. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so, so, um, most people in the U S haven't really heard of plant sterols yeah. um, they're not very popular, but they're widely used in other countries. Yeah. So the UK, um, many different parts of Europe, Australia, Mm -hmm. um, plant sterols are much more common, much more widely used in functional foods, yeah. such as drinks or margarines or spreads. Right. So there's, there's a lot that's interesting about, uh, plant sterols. And I think one of the challenges that, that I've always had when talking to people, I've sold plant sterols for a long time Yeah. Uh, is, is really just getting people to know what the heck are they? Yeah. You know, people, uh -huh. I, I think are the United States, especially like when I went to Europe, most of the food that was in, uh, in Europe, the, a lot of our American foods were banned. They wouldn't let them into, into Europe because they were so unhealthy and, and, and so they, they banned them. Yeah. Europe has a much, uh, stricter regulatory landscape for foods and, and for supplements. So there's a, there's a lot of formulations, um, that we commonly <laughs> eat in the U S that just, you, that, you know, the products, you have the exact same product, uh, you know, candies or different kinds of, you know, breakfast cereals or things that, that maybe kids eat. And, um, you have the exact same product in the U S and the, and, and, and in Europe, but it's a completely different formula in Europe. Right. Regulations are just that much stricter. So, I think I think when we we see with plant sterols is the uh, the the limited amount of the supplements um, the plant sterol supplements that are on the U.S. market mm -hmm. typically made from uh, GMO corn or soy sources. Uh, okay. So you think about the high volume of soybean oil that's processed in this country. Yeah, uh, and you think about the high volume of soybean oil that we consume. Right. Um, but in order to make that heat stable, you know, clear, bright, you know, perfect looking soybean oil, we have to take all the sterols and the vitamin E out of it. Right. And, um, but then <laughs> the, the same agribusinesses, uh, that, you know, refine them and make soybean oils, they'd be happy to sell you the plant sterols back. And it's all from say a GMO corn source or a GMO right. source. So what's what's interesting about the product that we have called Cardio Smile, Cardio Smile Liquid Plant Sterols, it's not only uh, in a liquid nano dispersion form, so it's right. very easy to use. It's very highly absorbable, um, but it's it's from it's actually made from pine trees. It's made from it's made from byproducts of the of of the of the wood industry. Okay. So when you think about when you think about the process of of, uh, you know, processing pine trees in order to make, whether it's lumber or, or, or paper. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of tree sap and there's a lot of fat, fats and oils that the, the pine tree industry can get out of a tree. Yeah. And it's actually a really rich source of plant sterols. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, you know, the loblolly and, uh, longleaf pines that are grown throughout the American South, uh, those aren't, those aren't GMO plants. I mean, those right. are, those are just natural pine trees growing all over the, you know, native species growing all over the U S and yeah. uh, they make a great source of non-GMO uh, pine, pine sterols. 
I think a lot of people don't realize that because if, if you look, you know, uh, there are a lot of products, you know, you know, like yours that are made with different certain wood and, you know, that comes from trees and people don't realize the rich amount of uh, nutrients and, and, and benefits we our bodies can get from these products. Like I know with, with cardio smile, it, it, it was, I felt so much better. I mean, even my digestive system felt like it was working better. Now I, I know for a fact, like many, many people, um, you can see all different forms on the market and there, there are some that are in jelly form, but I always feel like liquid is more potent, goes right into the body. And I feel like it has a better effect. Uh, do you have any, any, um, any, uh, I guess, uh, opinions of your own because they, they have like they have jelly forms of plant sterols and then they have you know like we like you know cardio smile is liquid you know for me i feel like it's more potent but what's your opinion on on the different types that they're out on the market that you're aware of well well plant plant sterols having been shown in people to lower cholesterol goes back all the way to the early 1950s okay so it's there's there's clinical evidence that goes way way back. Um, the form of plant sterols that exists in nature is what's called the free sterile, or just it's it's just a, a plain. It's not you know it doesn't have anything else because it, it's a um, there's a hydroxyl group on the end of okay. the sterile, mm -hmm. and that hydroxyl group is free. It's it's available. So plant sterols in nature are in this free sterile form, and they've been observed for a long time that they're good at lowering cholesterol. Um, but the challenge has always been in formulation. Plant sterols are a waxy, high melting solid. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, think of a little bit like almost like candle wax, but think of something that melts at a lot higher temperature. Right. And so you can make, you can powder them and you can make them into tablets um, and they do work, but they don't work very well. Mm -hmm. um, they're hard to break down in, into your body. You need to get a high surface area of plant sterols in your intestine to block all the cholesterol that your body's producing. Right. So, you know, there are, there were, and probably still are, uh, tablet-based powdered sterile products on the market. Yeah. Uh, and those don't work quite as well. Well, in in the 90s, um, scientists figured out that if you uh, combine a plant sterile with a fatty acid, mm -hmm. you know, fats and oils, right? vegetable fatty acid, um, you can make what's called a sterile ester. Okay. And that sterile ester... Um, is superior to the free sterile uh, tablets or the powdered free sterols. Yeah. But it comes with a lot of extra. So nearly half of the, of the amount of the sterile ester is not the sterile that's doing the work. Right. Fatty acid, which is excess calories, which is just fat that, that is, it makes it easier to absorb. It makes it better, easier to formulate with. That's the form most commonly that was used in margarines. So okay. many of sterile esters used in margarines in Europe. Mm -hmm. And sterile esters are fine, but they're in terms of their applications, um, they're they're limited primarily to soft gels or to things like margarines or yogurt drinks. Right. And those products can be great. They can be a great way to get plant sterols in your diet, but the 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 flip side is is that as we've become a better educated society about natural products yeah and and you know we start to think you know maybe maybe butter actually isn't so bad for you right uh, you know maybe maybe coconut fat uh, coconut oils or or butter are, are are actually pretty great choices and maybe margarines made from soybean oils are not actually that great right and then not everybody wants to drink dairy, right? So yogurt drinks, yogurt yeah. drink, I mean, people love, some people drink, you know, yogurt drink or something every day, but other people, you know, want to be plant-based or want to be veg vegan Yeah. and a yogurt drink doesn't work for them, right? right? So this leads us to the patented nano dispersion of 
free sterols. Mm-hmm. It's cardio smile. So, so cardio smile is a labor of love of many, you know, more than a decade and a half at this point yeah. of research, of development, um, of, of, of patented um, manufacturing capability to make this sophisticated nano dispersion, a yeah. very small particle size of plant sterols, but in the original free sterile form. So not this tablet that, that gets kind of stuck in your gut and, you know, you pass through and it doesn't really break apart and, and give you the, the, the absorption benefit. Yeah. But this nano dispersion that can, that can go into your intestine and can really be a very effective at blocking cholesterol. Well, the, the, the cardio smile nano dispersion format, um, is this easy to use liquid and it, it really, what's, what's interesting is it's not just, Hey, it's non GMO. It's not just that it's this neat, it's this neat, easy to use liquid. Yeah. It's actually been shown to be superior to other supplement forms of plant sterols, whether free sterols in the tablet form, yeah, or sterile esters in the soft gel form, because it's been shown to lower triglycerides. So oh, there was okay. a, there was a 2014 study at the University of Manitoba um, that gave people either plant sterols in the form of liquid cardio smile mm-hmm. or plant sterile esters. Right. And um, they had similar results in lowering cholesterol, but in the plant sterile, but in the cardio smile group, uh, it low, it raised HDL and it lowered triglycerides. Oh, really? And, right. And and this is really interesting. So this yeah. is something that cardio smile does that other plant sterile products don't. T- historically, if we're looking for um, a natural substance that lowers triglycerides it's really only ever been shown to be fish oil yeah um and the the most effective pharmaceutical products on the market that lower triglycerides are all basically just really high strength fish oil right there's the amarin um the uh the vasipa product yes and that's just like it's 97 percent epa omega-3 fatty acid (laughs) <laughs> and really good at lowering triglycerides. Um, conversely, a lot of people in the United States, I mean, it's not nearly as much as maybe some of us might wish, but right. it's about 10 or 12% of the population uh, is pretty regular about taking omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil. Yeah. And most people I've, I've, I've you know, I used to run a fish oil company. I've, I've been in the fish oil business for a long time. Yeah most people will take fish oil and they'll think, well, fish oil is good for my heart. It is Mm -hmm. fish oil. If they know anything about it. Yeah. Lowers my triglycerides, especially if I take quite a bit. Right. It does. Mm -hmm. And fish oil helps my cholesterol. It does not. (laughs) (laughs) So it's something like one out of five fish oil users think that fish oil lowers their cholesterol. Right. And it, there is evidence that uh, fish oil is in omega, the omega-3 fatty acids of fish oil, probably mostly EPA. Yeah. Um, does lower, uh, does improve the LDL particle size. Mm-hmm. It helps to make a healthier um, lipoprotein. Yeah. Um, that, that it's certainly that there's there's benefits other than just a number yeah. like omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil uh, or, or from plant-based sources help with that. Certainly I wouldn't want to give the impression that I don't think those are really important things to take every day because they are. Right. But most people who take a fish oil supplement for their heart, who are interested in a natural product, interested in that natural solution for their health, I, I, I meet these people all the time and they say, I don't know if I need plant sterols. I'm taking fish oil and that's good for my cholesterol. Yeah. Like, well, it won't lower your cholesterol. Um, <laughs> there's, there's mountains of evidence yeah, on yeah. this front. 
Um, so it's really, it's really plant sterols that are that beneficial substance that have been shown. They can be um, used alone mm -hmm. or they can be complementary to standard of care for people who still um, are, you know, their doctors prescribing them a pharmaceutical intervention and they're, they're looking to um, maybe reduce the amount that they have to take in a, in a day, or they're looking to, to augment what they're taking with a, with a pharmaceutical. Right. So, um, so a product like cardio smells, it's, it's easy to take the yeah. liquid, but it sees superior results other over other supplements. I have it actually right more. here. That's one of the products. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I like it a lot. I feel like uh, there is a lot of myths out there also. I think that's why people get so confused because you hear a lot of, if you ever read some of the articles on the internet, there's a lot of controversy. Someone will say something, then another person will say something and people get these myths like like you mentioned that omega-3 can actually help lower cholesterol when it can't, you know? So it's like, you know, it will help a certain form, but it's not gonna lower your numbers like people think it is. Yeah, and and it's even it's even things like we would all we would all we would often say that liquids are more absorbable, mm -hmm. but it is a little bit of a myth, right? Because okay. it really depends on the substance, gotcha. the matrix. Yes, mm -hmm. the it, it depends on the wow. kind of liquid. That made you know just yeah there's a lot of factors that go so for as an example omega-3 fatty acids um the exact same form of omega-3s whether it's uh, uh, a plant-based ahi flower oil whether it is a fish oil the exact same form that's put into a soft gel pill yeah is the same form that's put into a liquid pourable right so there's no difference in your absorption of these two products, it's it's you, you know, soft gels disintegrate in the gut really quickly because um, there's just gelatin and water. Right. Um, so, but there are you know there's a lot of popular, uh, say for instance, some some companies make um, liquid iron supplements. Right. There's a couple of prominent companies that make really good liquid iron supplements, and those are far superior to little hard tablets of you know iron oxide that are, you know, often prescribed by doctors. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a, it's a challenging landscape <laughs> in, in modernity to wade through, you know, all of the information that's at our fingertips and to try to decide, you know, what is actually accurate. Right. Exactly. If you have, um, let's say if you do use the plant sterile, is it good to use, combine it with maybe like a red yeast rice or is it like, um, or is it, it is it just effective? You don't need to add another supplement to have better effectiveness or does, does it help? You, you can't, you can use it in conjunction with a red yeast rice. Um, the, the thing about red yeast rice though is, is it, there's red yeast, red yeast rice, the, 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 the primary components of red yeast rice that actually do the cholesterol lowering effect is their statins. So oh, okay. they're I made in that. such a way that they're a natural product and they, um, they fit the definition of a supplement, not a drug, um, which there's FDA, you know, with the passage of DSHA in the early nineties has a pretty, pretty clear guidance on what that is. So, you know, red yeast rice products are not supplements masquerading as illegal drugs or anything like that but but the, the mechanism of action the way that they work is the yeah. same stats and you wow. might as well just buy that prescriptions because i was going to um, ask you because they, they say if you put you can't you shouldn't take more than 1200 milligrams because it could cause joint pain so it was uh so that's probably why because it's and a lot of pharmaceutical companies, when they're making statins, they add yet red yeast rice to the ingredients, a lot of the companies. So they're known to put red yeast rice in a lot of their in, in a lot of their cholesterol medications and certain medications too. Yeah, so it, it, red yeast rice, um, not a product that I personally would take. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's very interesting. I um, I don't know 
that there's really any significant difference or benefit over taking just a statin. Like okay. If I take a statin, I would just take a statin. But <laughs> yeah, I'm not a doctor. I don't give medical advice. I can just tell no, you yeah. what's what's similar. Um, I think you know what what's interesting about plant sterols is is that it, it's a side effect. It, it's a it's a zero or low side effect product. Uh, um, it's not because it's not. It, it, it really it we could we couldn't call plant sterols a nutrient mm -hmm. because um, really you know for for nutritionists the, the definition of a nutrient is something we absorb yeah right it's something like for instance we need calcium for our bones we need DHA for our brains you know we need omega threes into our cellular function. And we absorb them and we put them in our body and we use them, um, you know, stru in, in, in structural ways. Well, plant sterols um, are really probably closer to something like a fiber. Okay. We know dietary fiber is really, really important. Yes. And that, you know, um, uh, a healthy lifestyle involves plenty of dietary fiber for, for proper intestinal health. But at the same time, not a nutrient right you know, you're not incorporating fiber <laughs> <into your laughs> right you're right not, you're not building cells out of fiber in fact it's just the opposite it's it's there because it's helpful at eliminating things from our body right plant sterols have that very similar kind of effect it's it's not a nutrient yeah it it but it is important like fiber right and by the way fiber is really good at helping to lower cholesterol <laughs> you know, there's a uh there, there is a, um, a a reasonable amount of coverage. I think we've seen in the last few months on the portfolio diet, mm -hmm. and the portfolio diet is a new um, clinically researched diet that um, has um, a bunch of practical dietary guidelines for um, lowering cholesterol. Okay, and it was recently endorsed by the American Heart Association. Um, the, the portfolio diet among, and I, I don't know if I could recite off all the things that, the portfolio <laughs> things that you eat. it's kind of like a modified Mediterranean diet. Right. Um, but one of the things the portfolio diet specifically recommends is intake of plant sterols from foods yeah. and supplements. Um, and it's not, um, it's, it's not a fad diet that was just created by happy influencers yeah. um it's it's a clinic it's a clinically researched diet that's had a tremendous amount of of study and research behind it that just shows that if you eat the portfolio diet you will be have a healthier you know better metabolic health yeah and lower cholesterol and part of that is from the fibers and other things and part of that is from the plant sterols wow that's very interesting. That's very interesting. And I like the fact that you can, you can really, if you uptake your intake, intake on fiber, it could also help with your cholesterol. And I like the idea that you also pointed out about red yeast rice. I, I guarantee you thousands of people don't even realize, I didn't even realize that. And I'm pretty much up to date with all supplements and, and, and vitamins, but that I didn't know that I didn't realize that it basically works similar to a statin once it gets into your body. And that's probably why, like when I mentioned, it has a, some of the same effects and it tells you don't take out, you know, more than this milligrams and da 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 because it works like a statin. And that's what the side effects of statin do. It could cause joint pain and so forth. Yeah. It's, it's surprising. Um, how many red yeast rice products are on the market? Um, and I've, I've always just thought, I'm I'm not entirely sure why this category exists, but I mean there it is. Um, probably exists because it does work. It's just that you know there's a certain number of side effects that that happen with it, and you know people are just not as clued into. Yeah, no, for sure. Because you know they're thinking a natural supplement. They're thinking that it, it's it's pure, it's natural, it's good for the body. You know, but they're not they they don't realize that it it has it's pretty much very similar in lots of ways to a, a statin, you know, so that's a very good, that's good information to know. Yeah. I mean, 
I, I've been in the natural products business a good bit of my career and I really like natural products. I've always had a big emphasis on eating whole foods, yeah, cooking real food, not right. eating junk food. Um, you know, um, you know, it's, it's tremendously like the, the, the process of cooking your own food yeah, um, and sitting down, sitting down with your family, uh, once a day, mm -hmm. Sure, for dinner and and you know having the time where everybody comes together and you, you eat something that you know some or all of you have helped make yeah um it's fantastic I mean that that ties in with I like to grow and I like to grow my own vegetables and, and my garden yeah obviously I'm not a farmer so <laughs> still made the vegetables you know from from the store but yeah so so I've been in the natural food business a you know, long time, and I've always been a really big proponent of this, you know, whole food, um, you know, high quality, natural, nutrient rich, you know, food, you know, food first, and then add in all the supplements that we need that are that are missing from from the nutrients and, and substances missing from our diet. I think lately, the past five or six years, it's been pretty concerning to me the 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 plant-based craze um where everything that's plant-based must be good yeah and it's not yeah and it's not I forget that there's all sorts of plants that we can't eat because they're poisonous yeah <laughs> not that those are in our food supply but they're, they're I, I think I, I've seen this a lot in in the supplement industry where just somebody assumes it's the it's called the appeal to nature fallacy yeah someone assumes that because it's a substance that comes from a plant and that it's put into an extract that it must be good. It must be good for you. And it's, right. you know, um, <laughs> people forget that like, well, I mean, some plant-based extracts are tremendously uh, impactful to health, make, yeah. you know, ashwagandha and holy basil. Mm -hmm. Right. And then forget that on the other hand, you know, Socrates famously committed suicide by drinking poisoned hemlock. <laughs> yeah that's true i forgot about that one <laughs> so, it, it's, the plant-based movement um I, I i like parts of the sentiment um you know there's there's aspects of it that i think you know getting people to eat more plants and more vegetables right uh is it's it's, it's, it's certainly I mean, you can sign me on for that. I, you know, I try to yeah. eat a lot of, we try to eat a lot of vegetables and, and, right. and, and certainly more of them, um, and a great variety and diversity of them, but, but, you know, the trend towards like making everything in a laboratory, it's almost, it's almost like the, it's almost like the natural products industry kind of lost its mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I think it's starting to get it back Right. You know, with, with the uh with you know the success of the organic foods movement and natural foods over the last 20 years or so um and some really like really amazing companies that that built you know really successful businesses yeah help change the food system then you see in you know the mid to late you know 20 teens you you see that uh heavy investment from venture capital right the things that it's like wait a second i thought we left left the better living through science mm -hmm. and you know fake foods i thought we left that back in the 70s like, <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah exactly I, I thought the natural foods industry kind of you know that's what the health food store was all about you right. know mm -hmm. um, you know it's very true and spirulina and your fresh vegetables and 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 your cod liver oil and all that stuff right but yeah here we are it's like we made this plant-based burger in a lab yeah i know like, oh my what? goodness <laughs> so, I, I see that all the time i go into food stores and it says plant-based and i'm looking at it and there's nothing natural about this product in, in any way shape or form and it's like, I just shake my head. I'm like, oh my goodness. And then people pick it up, they buy it and they think it's good because it says plant-based. So immediately they think it, they're eating something healthy when there's nothing natural in that product whatsoever, you know? Right. Well, the, you know, 
and 99% or more of a bag of Doritos is plant-based. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean I let my kids eat Doritos. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe once in a blue moon. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh my God. I'd be 300 pounds of eight Doritos every day. <laughs> Now, when you're taking a, a plant steroid, um, do you do you um, you take it before each meal, or can you just take it once a day? Like, what's more, like, what's effective to, if you're tr trying to lose cholesterol and improve your heart heart your heart health? Is it good to have it but before a meal, or is it just it's fine to take it in the morning or when you wake up and that's all you need, or is it does it matter? So, historically. Your typical plant sterile formulation, um, if you take it on an empty stomach, it won't do anything. Okay. Because you've got to be digesting things. Got right? it. There's the mm -hmm. critical, most of the cholesterol um, comes from your liver. Right. And your liver secretes bile, which contains cholesterol. Right. And you've got to have things to digest to really get that that mechanism going. Gotcha. Um, Cardio Smile has been shown to be effective even on an empty stomach oh really but it's better if you take it with food right and this you know i'm i'm not a, a dietitian mm -hmm. so i you know a, a really well a really knowledgeable dietitian could could go through a, a long list of this supplement should be taken with food and this one should not yeah and, yeah and so forth um, so I can't give this like broad sweeping advice, but, um, I can say that a lot of nutrients and supplements should be taken with food, right? Uh, it's not universal, you know, really you should, you should understand specifically for this product, you know, but so, so for instance, um, with omega-3 fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids have been shown, um, to, to really their, their best if taken with your fattiest meal of the day. Okay. Because that fat that's in your diet. Yeah. Usually it's your largest meal of the day, gotcha. but the other fat that's in your diet helps your body to absorb the omega threes. Okay. Um, the biological processes that you're using to absorb fat. Um, it's better if there's more fat in the mix. Gotcha. Right? So um, with plant sterols, uh, it's really best if the plant sterols are in your intestine at the same time that your food is there, right? Because it's right. the cholesterol from your diet, from your food, and the cholesterol from your liver. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, it's really, you can take plant sterols sort of before, during, and after. Okay. Uh, um, you know, eating um with cardio smile it's pretty convenient to take added to a beverage or added to food people right. will put it in a smoothie they'll put yeah. it in a protein shake that's what i do yeah i mean um they'll put it in 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 in, in uh just plain water juice coffee tea right um, the trick the trick with cardio smile is because it is a nano dispersion. It is a little bit sensitive to very high heat and very acidic environments. So right. if you put it in something like really hot coffee, it can curdle mm, and that's, gotcha. it's kind of unpleasant. Yeah. It, it will clump and it just, people go, Oh, this is, this is not. <laughs> um, and, and, and occasion, most fruit juices and things that the pH isn't low enough to cause a problem, but right. if you, I don't know, if you have a really, really acidic, fresh squeezed orange juice, it may break the, break the emulsion and, gotcha. and cause it to clump, but it's pretty versatile with food. I mean, I, I often have it, um, with just a, a small glass of water. Right. Um, during breakfast, right. Okay. So you maybe have have a few eggs for breakfast and have just cardio smile on the bottom of a small juice glass with a couple ounces of water. Gotcha. It doesn't really taste like much of anything. So it yeah. has a, it has a bland neutral taste. Right. Um, it, it, it's easy to incorporate into a broad things. And, you know, one of my, uh, one of my industry colleagues 
who really likes plain sterile, she, she really likes to put it in her protein shakes. Both she and her husband say that it's the, 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 this actual plant sterile content yeah. helps improve the texture of the protein shake and helps it be less gritty. And so I, I felt like it did too. I did also. Yeah. So it, <laughs> you know, you can get a, you add it to your protein shake and you can get a, you can get that texture benefit that has nothing to do with health. It's just, well, this is yeah. more pleasant. Yeah. And I think also with you have, you have different flavors going on, you don't taste anything. So it's like, you know, it's bland to begin with, but you don't even know that you're, it's and it's in the drink. You don't even, it doesn't even phase you that you're actually drinking it. If you know what I'm saying, it's just, you know, but, uh, it, is it, so you don't really, you can take it, you can take it with your, your biggest meal, but you don't have to take it like every meal, like breakfast, lunch, dinner, or is it better to, so, so it, the, the product is designed to deliver two grams, which is the same as 2000 milligrams gotcha. two grams of plant sterols in a single stick pack. Gotcha. So one stick pack gives you a full daily intake of two grams. Of I got you now. I understand. Yeah. So, um, and that's what we were talking about in the beginning of the conversation. You need 2000. Most people get like two or 300 and they don't realize so I, I understand that. So that one stick is actually giving you a day supply of what you should be taking for a plant sterile. Gotcha. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So it, it makes it makes it easy to use. Um, and, uh, you know, it, you know, um, a, a, a good friend of mine who's a dietitian, um, and a, and a big advocate of supplements. Yeah. You know, she, she always says, that the most important time to take a, a supplement yeah. is the time that you remember to take it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like her way of thinking. Oh. Yeah. So for, I mean, you know, for really experienced dietitian perspective, I mean, you well, know, I've had many conversations <laughs> with her on that front and she'll, you know, she can dive into clinical science and, you know, produce a paper that will show that this product should be taken at this way and this product over here should be taken that way. Right. And there is truth in these, you know, these, this, the, these clinical findings, but yeah, yeah. You know, the, the vast majority of the barrier for us achieving that improved health through supplementation with natural products is just that we have to remember to take them. Exactly. A hundred percent. I mean, the, the, I think the technique that's been the most time honored, uh, for my family, for my wife and our, our three kids, yeah. it, um, sometimes it's my wife, sometimes it's me, but we'll lay out little food prep cups. Yeah. And oh, put that's a good idea. Everybody's daily ration and you leave it on the counter and yeah. then you sort of know, did you take yourself, you know, it's, it's there on the counter. It's got to be put away. Right. right so it's, yeah. you know, you can go chase down one of the kids and go, Hey, that's a great idea. You were supposed to take this earlier better. and you didn't, here it is. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, the same goes for me. I mean, it's sitting right next to the fruit and the fruit basket and I can look at it and think, Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. I still haven't today. Yeah. Haven't I? So um, the time that you remember to take it is the best time usually. Right. Exactly. I have mine. I keep it in the bathroom right by my toothbrush and everything. So then I, when I go in there and I, I'm getting ready in the morning, it's like right in front of me. And I would have friends that come in my bathroom and they tease me. They say my bathroom looks like a pharmacy, you know, but it, it <laughs> but I remember because it's like right in front of the mirror, right in front of me. And it's like, so then well, as I'm getting ready, brush your teeth and this and that, that's like, okay, the pills are right in front of me. My supplements are right in front of me. I just take everything as I'm going along. And that, that's usually, I'm usually pretty good. There'll be days where I might forget one bottle, but then at nighttime, by the time I get, you know, I'll figure it out most of the time that, you know, but overall it's like that morning is when I, I kind of remember and go through it all, you know. <laughs> yeah, you that's, it's really those Everybody has, everybody who's good at taking their supplements has that system, right? Yeah. And it's, it's going to be different for, for each of us, but it's, it's find a good system yeah. that you can rely on where you remember and it's, it's visible or it's present, mm -hmm. you know, often have things 
you know, it's people like to have everything put away and have a clean, uh, Yeah. a clean, tidy house. But sometimes leaving things out on the counter reminds you to deal with it and, Right. and reminds you to prioritize your health. Exactly. Now, if you had to take, give a couple of takeaways, a couple of things you like to emphasize to the listeners, what would you like to tell the listeners, you know, out of everything we talked about that you thought were really important, what, what are certain things you'd like to really emphasize? Well, I think that um, I, I would certainly emphasize that uh, supplementation with natural products, um, with important nutrients and, and other important substances are, it's, it, it's critical to overcoming our, our Western diet, um, that plant sterols are pretty effective natural way Yeah. to help our body metabolize cholesterol Mm -hmm. uh, and, and keep our cholesterol levels healthy. Yes. They're, they're, um, they're practical, they're affordable. Um, we can get them in a variety of sources in our diet. Um, we can, we can um, get them through supplementation. Right. We should, we should, when we're looking at things that are natural, we should look like red yeast rice. We should be aware of, potential side effects Yeah. that natural substances have because not not all natural products and not all natural substances are side effect free Yeah, hundred percent. and 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 you know lastly i think that establishing good routines is really important you know i i used to have um i i used to run a fish oil company and i used to give away lots and lots of fish oil products to just I mean, literally anybody. I mean, Yeah. somebody comes to my house, uh, work, do work at my house, I give them a bottle, you know, the, Yeah. the FedEx driver gets a bottle, just everybody uses a bottle. Um, go to somebody's house for, you know, dinner or something, bring them some bottles of supplements. And I would meet somebody and they'd say, oh yeah, hey, I've been, I, I got that, I got that bottle of fish oil you gave me. And I'm going, I saw you like three months ago or four months ago, I'm out by now. Uh, it doesn't work if you don't take it, you know, sitting it on Exactly. the shelf <laughs> somewhere buried, you know, behind your, your, <laughs> you know, other stuff in your pantry. Like it's not doing you any good. So, exactly. That's funny. you know, so establish those patterns and habits in order to make the supplementation regular, you know, habitual. Um, Can you tell us like the products that you sell again? So everybody knows the different products that you have available. Sure. Um, Cardio Smile Liquid Plant Sterols for Heart and Metabolic Health is uh, our flagship product for cholesterol reduction, and it comes in a 30-count uh, box, so it's a 30-day supply. It has 2,000 milligrams of plant sterols for each single sachet of liquid. Uh, we also, and, and Cardio Smile is available Uh, either on Amazon or cardiosmileusa.com. We also have a product called Regenerative Omegas, which I didn't speak about very much, but Regenerative Omegas is a plant-based omega-3 supplement made from ahi flower oil. Oh, wow. Ahi flower is a plant-based omega-369 formula, and that's available at regenerativeomegas.com or Amazon. Wow, that's amazing. And you, so either going on the website or going on Amazon, people could get access to these, these supplements and plant That's sterols. correct. Yeah. Whatever, whatever is the most, um, convenient Yeah. for, for people's, you know, shopping habits. This has been great. Thank you so much, Sam, for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we go or? No, thanks. Thanks for having me on. It, it's, I love to talk about natural products and supplements and plant sterols. And it's a always, always a really good time. So really, really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure having you on this show. Thank you so much for coming on. I hope to All have right. you back on. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Thanks, you too.